Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and today I'm at the wheel of possibly the rarest car in the UK. This is a 1959 Renault Frigate in, in right hand drive it's one of maybe two left? Who knows? Numbers are very scant. But not only that, it's a semi-automated manual. This is a bizarre beautiful French slice of Americana. I rather like it. Now, work from our sponsors and on with the review. Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description so below. this is the Renault Frigate and this is apparently the correct way to say it because that's how a French person told the owner you need to say it. This is Renault's big push into the upper markets over the middle class, the burgeoning middle class in the post-war years. Project 108 as it was known internally started developing just after the Second World War. People had freedom, they had money, they had aspirations, they wanted something new and exciting and Renault had seen what Citroen were doing with the Traction Avant and they wanted something to compete with that. They wanted a big car for the middle classes and they wanted people to spend lots of money on it. So they wanted it to be very nice indeed. So they pushed everything into the barrel to make it as nice as possible, shook it all up and came up with this. But not quite, because originally these beautiful American inspired curving rear fenders which stick out would have hidden an engine in the back. But in 1949, just two years before the car was launched, the president of Renault, Pierre Lefauchot, he looked at it and went, what are you doing? We don't want that. Make it front engined. So with just two years before launch, they had to go and completely re-engineer everything to make it front engined and rear wheel drive, traditionally. It was designed to be a bigger brother to the Renault 4CV, which is a newly released car on the market at the time, but obviously a bigger and more expensive. But although that looked fairly traditionally French and for traditionally Renault, this looked nothing like that at all. This was very, very American inspired. The mid-Atlantic styling was everything that people were looking for at the time. So we have got all the accessories you could possibly desire. We've got this amazing little shade on the window, this lovely satin stainless steel swage line with a little lovely side marker light as well. The way these rear fenders stick out and curve around and it's even got fins on the back and this nice little aluminium, I think it's aluminium, protection plate down here into the front where it's no longer separate fenders, separate bonnet, all separated. It's all integrated as one piece of unitary design. And the front end is a large open grille, like many American cars were coming out in the late 1940s and like this was copying. One curious little styling feature on this car though is this badge down here. There's nothing particularly unusual about the fact it says Renault on the side of the car because it is a Renault. But if you look on the other side of the car, the driver's side on this right hand drive one, it doesn't say that. It says Transfluide because this car is automatic, which is quite an unusual feature, very unusual feature and very expensive at the time. And there's a little bit of mystery in this car's past because its paperwork went missing at some point in the last 50 years or so and so we don't actually know which model it is. I think it's a Manoir which is the high-end one with the automatic gearbox and a slightly better engine. Now when the Frigate was launched it came with a two litre four cylinder engine, a 1996 CC motor that made 56 horsepower. Now that might not sound like a lot for the simple reason that it isn't. So within two years it upped that to 65 horsepower which made a significant difference to the, uh, the power output. However later on there was another upgrade that it gained a 2.1 litre engine. That was a 2141 CC which looked identical from the outside but gave it 77 horsepower. But later on again when the Transfluid car came out that was pushed up to a little bit more to 80 horsepower because there's a little bit of power sap in an automatic and that I think is what we find in this car here because it is a transfluid. There's a few nice little touches under here apart from the quite interesting styling of the rocker cover we've got an oil bath air filter we've got a single fairly small carburetor and what is quite cool is this little VIN plate is a diamond the same as the Renault logo and it's about the only time you'll find the diamond anywhere on this car it's very well hidden and concealed as a Renault funnily enough. Now walking up to get inside the uh, free you'll notice it has quarter lights, big solid cast door handles, although they are actually fairly hollow inside, that's unusual, so you can feel the back of them, that's an unusual thing you don't often feel. And a quick glance around the interior, there's a lot of vinyl used in this car, very hard wearing, very wipe cleanable because it's, although middle class and posh, a strong air of practicality. So door card first of all, we do have contrast colour metal which matches the interior, the rest of the car is red, the red contrasts and looks really nice against the white exterior, but this is a pressed steel window frame above red vinyl door card, simple plain door card of the 1950s, so no pockets, no cup holders, just a little armrest, 
and very small, a slightly rubbery feeling plastic window winder and door handle, which I suspect is fairly fragile as both the front ones have in fact broken. The only detail to break this up is this little aluminium or stainless steel trim piece above and below, just to make it look a little bit more exciting. Inside, we've got more red vinyl, very similar to the door cards, lovely red color, but a big bench seat, very, very soft and comfortable. It even has an armrest, so if you don't want to snuggle up to your passenger, you can uh, separate yourself with the uh, pull down armrest. But what you do find though, we have got a rubber floor so that you can like an early Range Rover, hose the thing out when you're done at the end of the day, taking the dogs for a walk, muddy boots, wash it out easily at the end. <clears throat> I uh, apologise for any barking you might hear at this point as a dog walking van has just pulled up next to the car. Now, this dashboard, like the doors, is all pressed metal. So we've got a steel dashboard for safety last, of course. But it's a lovely two-tone affair. We've got a red on the top, a red little press panel here, which actually not only hides the back of the uh, scuttle, also directs air from the blowers up to the window. Also on the top of this very, very tiny tea shelf. So you'll struggle to get anything beyond a pastis or a tiny coffee on this tea shelf area. We do have an ashtray, which rolls backwards to stub out your gitan. And we have a dash-mounted mirror. How curious, we I drove the uh, Lotus Elite with a dash-mounted mirror just the other day, and once again, we have another dash-mounted mirror. How curious. Um, on the white area, which is separated by a bit of chrome detailing, this is very, very American 1950s jukebox styling in here, and it is absolutely wonderful for it. We've got a pressed metal panel lid for the glove box. No cup holder stamped in there, you'll notice. We have got a Motorola radio because this thing was as posh as it comes. A little air vent grill which looks like something from a Spanish galleon. I apologise to the dogs again. And the speaker is this little box here slung underneath the dashboard. I don't know if these two parts are original or if they were added later on in the 1960s, but the fact it had a cutout pressed into the dashboard ready for a radio suggests they were thinking of it at the time. Now moving in front of the driver, things get very interesting indeed. So first of all, we've got the instrumentation all in one single cluster. The needle moves along this long curved arc from zero to 100, which is a magical number in the 50s. It's fantastic futuristic space age font. And below that we'll find the mileage, which is apparently 31 and a half thousand miles. And as far as we can tell, is actually genuine. A little trip meter, the water and petrol, and on the other side, the ampere and the clock. And you'll notice this little logo down here, the frigate ship logo in the bottom of the dashboard. So this is the frigate's own little icon, and that is repeated here on the steering wheel. Embossed in silver, put on the Renault diamond, and underneath this clear dome. But moving back ever so slightly, we have got this quite curious indicator, because this is the transfluid. We have got our gear indicator just here, with uh, P, R, E, N, and M, and V, R which stand for some quite curious things. So this isn't one, two, three, this is extreme mountainous and village road for one, two, three. Of course, you've got park, reverse and neutral as very boringly normal. On the left-hand side, we have actually got the gear shifter, the selector to change from one ratio to the next. And here on the side of the column, hidden artfully by the uh, steering wheel itself, a very, very tiny indicator switch on the left-hand side and a rotating light switch on the right and also gives us our, our horn. Ah, oh, that's a middle-class French pop in the 1950s. There is a second, more dominant pop, but sadly, this ring is currently not working, so that is something that is working to rectify as soon as possible. That is part of this massive, very thin-rimmed, hard plastic with uh, moulded-in rattan styling. It's a lovely-looking thing. It is such a beautiful piece of 1950s mid-century design. It's really, really, really pretty. The other thing you'll notice about the front of this car, before we get off and drive it, is the headroom in here, which is absolutely vast. You can wear your fedora in here with ease. And you'll notice the red and white two-tone interior continues right up the B posts, past these little interior courtesy lights into the white of the ceiling, and even the sun visors are trimmed in red. It is a beautiful piece of design. Americana meets French thoughtfulness in a very tasteful way. And we even have a metal sunroof in here. Now, climbing into the back of the car, 
For a 1950s car, that is absolutely incredible access. Very tall SUV-like levels of door height. Not too bad bashing your head area just there. You do have to duck a little bit to get in. Although, once you're inside, you do have very good headroom indeed, in fact. We've got a huge amount of space in terms of seat pillarage, although we have not much in terms of other things in terms of amenities. Things like seat belts, definitely not going to happen in here. We do have a grab handle to shut the door with. We are missing door handles. The owner has some on order from France. Window winders, so you can open the window. And of course, most essential, an ashtray, because France. One thing I didn't notice though, it's actually got carpet in the back of the car. So the rear seat passengers, the kids get a more comfy ride than the scruffy adults in the front. Right, so let's take the free gate out on the road. Now starting up is nice and easy. Just turn the key and it pops into life. There's no clutch to push because it's basically an automated manual, which is quite an unusual thing. So foot on the brake. Underneath my bottom somewhere down here is a little electric motor driving a pump, which is doing the clutchy things for us. So push away and firmly up into M, which stands for mountain. Umbrella handbrake hidden under the dashboard, squeeze and release, bash your knuckles into the thing and away we go. You'll notice we didn't trouble ourselves with the seat belts because there aren't any. And it glides away really nicely. It doesn't have power steering obviously because it's in 1959 and European, but it doesn't really feel like you need it. And it's so smooth. Now you can actually pull away quite happily in second, or mountain as it's called. As we get up to high speed, we can change up to village. But as we're hitting a roundabout in a second, we'll hang on a second for a moment. It corners so easily. It's a lovely thing to be in. Do feel a bit like it's sliding around on the big bench yeah, seats. <laughs> okay, now brave move all the way down, and we're in Village Riot. <laughs> Can't quite get the hang of that little mirror down there. That's a curious one. At 50 miles an hour, and the thing feels so stable. It's amazing. It really, is a comfortable, nice thing to be driving. Now, it might look American outside, but underneath it's far more European and modern as it has independent suspension all round. At first there were just two trim levels, Affairs and Amiral. Later on there was an estate called the Domain. And finally there was this, the luxury manoir, including the Transfluid transmission. There was even an Henri Chaperon Coupe, a low volume convertible built on it. This particular car has had an interesting life. It spent at least 15 years as part of Renault UK's heritage collection. Unfortunately during that time, it did lose all of its history, so no one really knows much of where it came from or what it actually is under the skin. And top here! There we go, into village again. Oh, I've indicated some more. This is a lovely car to drive. It's quite roly-poly because it's very soft suspension. And the brakes are surprisingly sharp. They don't really do much for a moment, then they really do bite. But it's uh, very good. And the steering is remarkably accurate as well, considering it's a car that's now pushing, what, 70 years old? But then it has only got 31,000 miles, so maybe it's not too surprising. It feels so amazing as it is. When the car was launched, it came with a four-speed manual as the only gearbox option. But in 1957, they added this Transfluid as a more luxurious option on the top spec cars. Well, thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this ride out in this ridiculously rare but astonishingly pretty little slice of French Americana. If you have, please, as always, hit like and subscribe and join us again next time driving something completely different. <laughs>